Well, in a few minutes, all this stuff is going to be, well, a few minutes, probably about an hour and 30. Uh, all this will be beef uh, stew or beef soup. In my opinion, the only difference between stew and soup is how much water is in it. That pot will be full. I can't make small doses for anybody. This will be a bunch of servings. I've cut up some potatoes. I'm soaking them in water so they don't oxidize in the air. We like a lot of diced carrots. I have used a bunch of uh, sweet onions, which I think makes all better than just yellow onions. And we have cut up celery. When you cut this stuff up, I'm sure you all have these little Vidalia chop wizards. Well, we just cut one thing up, we just do it by hand, but when you're cutting all this up, it sure saves a lot of time. And you only have to clean the cutter once. And then, uh, as far as vegetables, all the old, we don't eat a whole bag of uh, frozen vegetables. So here's some butter beans left over. This is a good time to get rid of all the little partial packages in your freezer. We are going to use some uh, lima beans and some green peas and some diced tomatoes and some stewed tomatoes. And we're going to use their tomato soup recipe that we do can, and this is not this year's. And we generally don't use a lot of canned goods because they're high in sodium. But this particular brand of white corn is about the best tasting going. We used to buy Mitchell's for years, and it was shoe peg corn. And a few years ago, they must not grow shoe peg corn anymore because it changed. And you can't find this on the shelf a lot of times. It'll be empty because it is that good. So anyway, we're going to be back with you in a minute. Left one thing out. We're going to also use our green beans from our garden, and these we put up on August the 7th. When we open up these vacuum seal bags, we can break off what we want, which I've done here. And uh, we fold it over as many times as we can and put a couple rubber bands on it, and it'll keep until we're getting ready to use it again. The reason I've taken these out is they're frozen. They're harder to cut that way, and I will run some water over them, and that way it'll be easier to slice them up. Nothing like green, fresh green beans in a soup, even if they're frozen. This is a two and a quarter pound eye of round. It is the best meat that you can eat because it has less fat in it. All the others that taste better and have more marbleization in them uh, are, have more cholesterol. And I don't need any of this beef fat in my soup, so I'm going to trim it all off. I'm going to let my wife run the camera so I can use both hands to trim this meat off. We took this eye round out of the package and uh, we uh, washed it off and I blotted it with paper towels because when I'm cutting meat I don't want it slick and running around and I end up cutting my finger. I prefer a big knife like this. This has a great edge on it. I just sharpened it. We have a nice sharpener. And if you just work under it and turn the knife away, you won't end up with a whole lot of uh, meat going with it. This one probably has a little more on it than you usually get. If you have a fairly sharp knife and you can get it started, sometimes you can pull it off. If you just sort of turn under and roll your knife as you go forward with the blade, it will go right through it and generally take most of it off. I just don't need this extra fat in the soup. We try to watch what we eat. Try not to make this too long, but sometimes you do get a little pocket. Since we're going to cube this, it won't matter whether the meat gets cut much. If I didn't have an audience, it wouldn't be fighting me as much as it usually is. So you get the idea of it, but I'd rather not eat that personally. I'm going to trim this up a little bit more and then I'll get back with you. These knives are Heichel's and they made this sharpener years ago. We tried to find some more of them and we didn't find them. 
I haven't looked online, but it is an excellent knife sharpener, and you've got a nice grip handle on it, in case there's anything left on the blade. What you're trying to do with beef, beef stew or beef soup is cut them maybe about a half inch. We'll do all of these like this. After we get them all cut, you will go across them. The object of the game here, folks, is we've had people and said, man, your meat is so tender in your beef stew or beef soup, you know. And what do you do? And the deal is that... Uh, Need to keep talking. The deal is that if you drop this meat in your soup just like that, all the blood will run out of it into your soup. It'll make it frothy and really not too appetizing. If you take an ironclad skillet, cast iron skillet, and put it some butter in it and heat all these up to their cook on all the sides, when you put it in your soup, it is perfect. It can't leak out any juice, and it makes it tender. Otherwise, it's tough. So the next thing we're going to do is show you how that's done. We've started the cast iron skillets. It's maybe a tablespoon and a half of butter. You can add some more if you need it. Put it on high when it starts. And if the meat's cold, it was in the refrigerator. So you want to back this down maybe to seven. I don't have it to mirror me because I don't record this every time I do it. You can see all the meat over here. It's all cubed up. Try to get it about the same size. It doesn't really work. This is time consuming, but it sure does make the soup great because the meat is tender. And what you do is you put about half of it in there because that makes for like 20 some people. And you can tell that the, I can tell it's a little too warm. Some of the pieces will have a little sinew on it. And I'll stick a little bit more butter in it because that's not going to be enough. Looks like about four tablespoons, three and a half tablespoons. Most of the butter is not going to be in the soup. Let's stick it up on eight to get it going. Anyway, for the beginning you can just circle it around and it will cover most of the sides. And at the end, I'll take this or what I'm going to take them out with and I will just roll them around. It might seem anal retentive, but if any side is still red, all the juice will come out of the piece of meat and you're eating a big tough piece of meat. But for right now, you can get most of the sides by just moving it. Try to get them about the same size cubes, but that's hard to do. But you can see that now 50% or more is already pink. And since I had put a little butter in it, I moved it up to 8. Now I'll move it down to 7 on this electric range. And you don't want it too hot because you wouldn't have time to turn these pieces over. And as you turn them over, it's not, you don't have to get every side because the heat will transfer up the sides. So if that's a little pink on the edges, when you turn that over, it will get the whole thing pink. And this takes a few minutes to do, but uh, it's worth it on the taste. Nobody wants chewy meat. So anyway, we'll cut this short, and when I get them all turned over and cooked a few minutes longer, we'll show them you what they look like when we take them out. You'll see now that most of the pink is gone. If they're pink, they'll still leak out. Reach across the pan. Most of them are done. I had to turn most of them. And then I put it in a strainer to get all the grease off of it and all the butter. And I'll show you the difference. Because once I get this out of here, let's say we had three and a half tablespoons of butter. Do you want that in your soup or you want water? That's the name of the game. That's why I do it this way. So all that that leaked out of the meat while we were searing the edges and making it no longer pink is now going into a can to go into my trash can. Now I'll do the other half. We won't have to film it because you've already seen it.